What's going on, Giants fans? Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And today's show, we're going to touch on what Daniel Jones had to say at offseason workouts. He spoke with the media. There's some rumors coming out around Charles Cross and James Cook leading up into the NFL draft. And we've got a list of pre-draft visits that the Giants have already scheduled and the quarterback that they've already met with. But another quarterback we've got to touch on first is our guy Danny Dimes. And Daniel Jones was asked about his neck injury at uh, offseason workouts the first week of it. And he said to the media, I'll be cleared and ready to go. And you can look at this two ways. Good. He'll be cleared. He'll be ready for week one. He'll be ready to roll once OTAs and everything comes rolling around. But has he actually been cleared yet? The I'll be cleared gives me vibes that he hasn't been cleared yet. And that's kind of a problem if you're the New York football Giants. This is a neck injury that caused Daniel Jones to miss the last six games of the 2021 NFL season. And it's been a couple months since the season ended where the Giants were taking QB sneaks on second and third down backed up against their end zone. And now he still hasn't been cleared. Well, he said he will be cleared. So that kind of gives me a little bit of a... I guess you would say worrisome. I'm a little bit worried about that. The fact he has not been cleared yet, I think is noteworthy for all New York Giants fans. And what do you know? The Giants, they've already had a pre-draft visit with Malik Willis. So one quarterback we got that we want to give a fifth-year option to, that we want to be the uh, future franchise quarterback, has a neck injury that he hasn't been cleared with. And the Giants, they've already had a pre-draft visit with Malik Willis, according to Adam Schefter. I think this is more of just doing their due diligence. I don't really believe that the Giants are in the camp to draft Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett or one of the other many quarterbacks at pick five or pick seven. You never say never in the NFL if we learned anything in the 2022 NFL offseason, but who knows what's going to happen. But say you're Joe Shane, and you had to pick a quarterback to roll with for the next five years. Think about this for the long-term option. Would you rather it be Malik Willis? You can go down and type MW. Or if you want to stick by and roll with Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, you can go down in the comments and type DJ. Next portion, portion of the show. There are some rumors coming around and about on some Giants draft prospects. We got some on James Cook, the brother of Dalvin Cook, the running back for the Minnesota Vikings. But first, I want to talk about Charles Cross, the offensive lineman, and the left tackle out of Mississippi State. And according to rumors, the reports are the Giants have done a ton of work on Cross. And I think that's a good idea because this is someone that's a left tackle through and through. But if the Giants were to draft him, they'd have to switch him to the right side of the line. There's definitely some question marks if he's able to make that transition from the left side to the right side. And it's not just that easy where you play at a different spot on the offensive line. It's like asking a left-handed pitcher to go and pitch with his right hand. It's different. It has different footwork. You have to get off the line differently. Hand placement is different. you got to lead with your left hand as a left tackle, whereas as a right tackle, you got to lead with your right hand. It is a completely different position. As a left tackle, on this team, you're asked to be more of a pass protector, whereas most teams and most traditional NFL styles, the right tackle is asked to be more of a road paver and a run block and that's not really what Charles Cross is. When you look at what he did last year for Mississippi State, he was one of the best pass-blocking left tackles in college football. Allowed zero QB hits, just two sacks, had a pass-block grade of almost 85 according to Pro Football Focus. He also had a run-blocking grade of 87.2. But there is some cause for concerns if he's going to be able to transition to be a run-blocking type of guy in the, in the NFL on the right side of the line. Some pros and cons from PFF. He's light on his feet. Charles Cross is a great athlete. Matt Miller, he had a piece out and he put a quote out there that said when he was doing drills, he was running with the tight ends. This is someone that if you look at him, you don't think he plays offensive line. And that's kind of the new age offensive line. He's tall, he's slim, but he's got a great base and he has strong hands. He uses his length really, really well. And that's why he was such a great pass blocker. He knew, pass blocker, excuse me. He knows how to create depth while using his hands and his punches to set pass rushers off their mark. He's an elite pass blocker. Some people have him as the best pass blocker, whereas others have Evan Neal as the best pass blocker in the NFL draft. Some cons. He's inexperienced in a pro-style type of run scheme. He wasn't really asked to do that at Mississippi State. So that will kind of be a change of pace for him when he comes to the National Football League. But I think he will have a seamless transition 
in that area. Another con, according to Pro Football Focus, was that he needs to get more depth in pass pro, which pretty much means he needs to create more space between the line of scrimmage and where he sets up shop when he gets into pass protection. Use that kick step a little bit more and create some more space because the guys you're blocking in the SEC, while those are great, the people you're blocking on Sundays are a little bit faster and stronger. And according to them, he has a unique stance with his feet closer together, which can cause problems for balance and his ability to use strong punches. But I think this is a good player. This is someone that I would take, you know what, pick 9 or 10. I just think 5 or 7 might be a little bit of a reach for Charles Cross. Do you really want to take the third offensive tackle in the NFL draft at pick 5? where Ika Mekwano maybe goes in the top five, or Evan Neal's gone. If both those guys are there, maybe you have to take him at pick five or pick seven because it is such an important position of need for the Giants. They have to go and take an offensive tackle in the first round. And I think worst case scenario, it would be Charles Cross. Not because he's a bad prospect. I think he's going to be a solid player in the NFL. It's just that there's two guys that are better at his position and fit a bigger need for the Giants. But if you're on the clock with pick number five staring at you in the face or pick number seven, and let's say Evan Neal and Ikim Okwanu are gone, would you draft Charles Cross? If you would, go down in the comments and type D for draft. Or if you're like, man, I just can't reach on Cross that early. He doesn't really fit in with the scheme. Is he going to be able to transition to right tackle? I understand you and I hear your thoughts and concerns. You can go down and type P for pass. The NFL draft is less than a month away, and the draft hats are officially out. Shout out to Fanatics, and we've got them on sale. When you go to chatsports.com slash Giants draft hat, they've got all type of styles. They got black on black in the flat brim. They've got black on black in the dad hat with the curved brim. Then they have this one, which I actually like a little bit. Blue brim, blue Giants, red New York cursive letters over the top. They got that in a curved bill, and they've also got it in a flat brim style. You can get all different cut types of those Giants draft hats at chatsports.com slash Giants draft hat. Make sure you you're wearing the same gear that the Giants draftees will be wearing on NFL Draft Day. So go, go and shop chatsports.com slash Giants Draft Hat. Another player that we've talked about on the show, and three or four weeks ago, Art Stapleton, who covers the New York Giants, he said that James Cook was someone that the Giants were very interested in. And what do you know? The Giants have now scheduled a top 30 visit with James Cook, the running back out of Georgia. And the latest rumors are that the Giants love James Cook. And I like him as a player. I think he's a guy that can be a three down back. He's not going in rounds one, two, or three. He's, he's slated to go in that third to fifth round because he didn't have the most production at Georgia. Just 113 carries this past year, 728 yards. He had a great yards per carry, 6.4. When he gets into open, speed, open space, he can you put on the afterburners and get away from defenders. He's extremely fast, had seven touchdowns. He's also a threat out of the backfield. Last year, he had 27 grabs for 284 yards and four receiving touchdowns, so 11 total touchdowns. The thing, though, with James Cook, and honestly, with any running back in the NFL draft, especially since we just used the second overall pick on that position, I don't think you draft a running back before round four Oh, a round five, excuse me, if you're the Giants. I think round four is also a reach, but just before round five, I don't really like that option for the Giants. They have a good running back room. Saquon Barkley has to prove this year that he's the guy. This is the last year that Saquon Barkley, if he doesn't play well, will get the money and the touches to be a lead back. You just gave Matt Breida a contract in an NFL free agency. I think he's going to be a good backup and spell back to Barkley, a speedy back that can also contribute a little bit on third downs. You drafted Gary Brightwell last year out of Arizona, and then you signed Antonio Williams from the Buffalo Bills as well. So you have four guys on the roster right now that I think are going to be on the 53-man roster. I'm just not sure where James Cook fits into that role, and that's not because he's a good player, because he is one. He's got an athletic first step. He's someone that when he gets into open field, he's hard to chase down. He's not an easy tackle. He can run through arm tackles. He's a good back, no doubt about it. But would you draft him in round three? Is round three where he should go, or is it too early? Let me know what you think. Go down and type Y for yes if you would draft him in round three, or if you think that's too early, you can go down and type N for no. Some N New York Giants draft pre-draft visits and meetings are coming out. They've already met with Malik Willis, which kind of went under 
under you know noted and talked about. Nobody really talked about that, but Rappaport put it out today that they've already met with him on the day that Daniel Jones said that he should be good to go and he will be cleared, meaning he hasn't. They also have meetings lined up with Ike Mukwanu, Aiden Hutchinson, and James Cook. I expect many other draft meetings to happen. I think he's going to have 30 official pre-draft visits. So the Giants, they've got about 26 more to go. But when you look at my big board, I expect all of these guys to get pre-draft visits for the Giants. Guys like Aiden Hutchinson, who I have as the best player in this draft, followed by Ika McQuan, who has already got a meeting. I think Evan Neal will get one very, very soon. Same with Kyle Hamilton, who I have at, uh, my fourth prospect on my big board. Then Kayvon Thibodeau at number five, Sauce Gardner at number six, Trayvon Walker at number seven. Then I have the first receiver, Garrett Wilson, at number eight in my big board. I'd honestly be happy if any of these guys went to the Giants with pick number five or picks number seven. I appreciate you for making New York Giants now a part of your day. Give us a like if you made it this far in the video. You're a real one. I appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time on the next New York Giants Now.